Palm Olive Soap, Your Beauty Hope, and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, is as conscientious about her work as any other teacher. But she's come to realize lately that there are things outside of the classroom which also demand her attention. There are two things which I feel I must do to keep abreast of the time. First, I read all the latest figures on the cost of living. And secondly, I never miss Little Abner. (laughs) It's not that I approve of Little Abner's grammar, but with my salary as a schoolteacher, I have to know what's going on in Dogpatch so I won't seem like a yokel when I move there. (laughs) Against this day, Mrs. Davis, my landlady, started last week to pack me a lunch so that I could save the money I'd spend in the school cafeteria. Although she's come up with some pretty weird recipes, the first sandwiches she constructed for me were made out of loganberry jelly and cucumbers. (laughs) I was still grateful that I didn't have to eat the miserable food they've been serving in the cafeteria lately. Anyway, last Friday when the bell for lunch period rang, I realized I'd forgotten to bring my lunch from home. So I picked up my purse and a fifth of bicarbonate and... (laughs) But before I reached the door of my room, it opened and our principal, Mr. Osgood Conklin, came in. Good morning, Miss Brooks. On our way to lunch, were we? We? Oh, you mean my purse and me. Yes, sir, we were going to live dangerously again. (laughs) That's what I dropped in to talk to you about, Miss Brooks. Those kind of remarks about the cafeteria have got to stop. Oh, I realize that the food they serve isn't as good as the Waldorf Astoria or the Ritz Hotel. Or, or... Pete's Pigsty. <laughs> <laughs> but you must remember, Miss Brooks, that our cafeteria is operated at a very low margin of profit. Now, I've just had some very disturbing news from Mrs. Dipson, the school dietitian. What happened? Did she eat there? <laughs> This is no laughing matter. Sales have fallen way off. And although the Board of Education doesn't hold me directly responsible for the operation, the cafeteria is part of Madison, and I am Madison's ruler, a principal. <laughs> well, what do you want me to do, Your Highness? Uh, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> I want you to find out the temper of the student body. You have the confidence of most of the pupils here, Miss Brooks, and I must admit their attitude has me a little worried. I dropped into the cafeteria yesterday, and I could swear I heard rumbling. Is that before or after lunch? (laughs) Very amusing, albeit extremely (laughs) ill-timed. Now then, Miss Brooks, I'm counting on your cooperation. Will you carry the ball for me? Yes, Mr. Conklin, I'll carry the ball, provided I can have someone to run interference. You know, help me out. Someone like who, for instance? Someone like whom? Don't show off. (laughs) Who do you want to help you? Well, I thought maybe Mr. Boynton would be good. The students in his biology class are very fond of him. They're not the only ones. Why, Mr. Conklin, you've been muscling into my subconscious. (laughs) That is, I usually have lunch with Mr. Boynton, and, well, together we... Very well. Draft him. (laughs) Aye, aye, sir. But impress upon him the necessity for discretion. May all be just a tempest in a teapot. And remember, I want as little publicity in this affair as possible. Yes, Mr. Conklin, I understand. Good. As you were. (laughs) Let's see now, how was I? (laughs) Oh, yes, on my way to the... Come in. It's me, Connie. You forgot your lunchbox this morning, so I brought it down for you. Oh, that was very sweet of you, Mrs. Davis. What's in it? What would you like to be in it? Well, frankly, I've gained so much weight since I stopped eating in the cafeteria. I'd like to find a thin sandwich in it. A thin sandwich? What's that? That's a Chiron reducing tablet between two slices of rye crisp. (laughs) That's one I heard on Chef Milani's program. Oh, you don't have to worry about your figure, Connie. Although I do think it was a good idea of mine to start giving you lunch so you can save enough to pay me the rent money. Oh, I'll get that straightened out as soon as possible, Mrs. Davis. Now, I have to go down... Oh, I don't want you to worry about it, Connie. As the old saying goes, there's no sense in both of us worrying. (laughs) 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 That's what 
when I heard on Portia Faces Life. <laughs> Do you know something, Connie? What, Mrs. Davis? My brother Victor once saved so much money by eliminating lunches that he could afford to spend two weeks at the Mayo Brothers Clinic. <laughs> Mayo Brothers Clinic? What was he suffering from? Malnutrition. <laughs> and an English teacher shouldn't say suffering from. I'm sorry. I'd better be getting over My the... My sister Angela once eliminated both breakfast and lunch for three months. She had to cut it out, though. Why? Her dinners were costing her a fortune. <laughs> well, I'll be running along, Connie. You can tell me how you enjoyed the little surprise I made for you when you come home this afternoon. If I come home this afternoon. <laughs> I'll walk out with you, Mrs. Davis. I've got to go back to the cafeteria and see how things are going. Well, goodbye, dear. and Thanks for bringing the lunchbox. You're welcome, Connie. Oh, dear, what's the use? I can't keep the secret another minute. Guess what kind of a sandwich I made for you. Uh, parsley and banana. <laughs> On what kind of bread? <laughs> Gluten. I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> oh, Miss Brooks. Oh. Don't be scared. It's only me, Stretch Snodgrass. Well, why is Madison star athlete lurking outside of the cafeteria? I ain't lurking. I'm not lurking. I didn't say you was. <laughs> were. Were what? What were what? <laughs> you confuse me sometimes, Miss Brooks. Me too. What did you want to tell me? Just that when you go into the cafeteria, you shouldn't buy anything. The student body's going to boycott the place. There's a meeting right now with the board of Stretch... Stre Strategy. Oh, well, who, who, who's on it? <laughs> the board, I mean. Walter Denton and Harriet Conklin, mostly. Mostly, huh? Well, Harriet's father will mostly take care of her if he finds out about this. Where are they meeting? In the room where they print the school paper. You know, the Madison Monitor. I know the name of the paper, Stretch. I made it up. Oh, yeah? It's a very good name, Miss Brooks. Madison Monitor. What I like about it, it rhymes. <laughs> rhymes? With what? Well, I don't know with what. It just rhymes. <laughs> Madison, monitor. See what I mean? If I did, we'd both be in trouble. <laughs> Pardon me, but is this the Office of Strategic Services? Oh, come in, Miss Brooks. Uh, close the door, Harriet. You see, Miss Brooks, this is a secret meeting about the food in the cafeteria, but we don't want the faculty to get wind of it. Well, how can they help it? On a clear day, you can smell it in Catalina. <laughs> Miss Brooks, this is Mr. Dunbar. He used to teach here at Madison. How do you do, Miss Brooks? Hello, Mr. Dunbar. I just stopped by to see Mr. Conklin, but he wasn't in his office, so I dropped over to one of my favorite old haunts when I taught here, the newspaper room. Oh, did you used to haunt the newspaper room? I mean, were you uh, connected with the school paper? Oh, yes, indeed. I was faculty advisor. That's what Miss Brooks is now. Oh? Well, I don't want to disturb you. Go right ahead with your meeting. I'll just look through some of these old copies of the monitor. Okay, Mr. Dunbar. Now then, Miss Brooks, did anyone see you come in here? Why, no, Walter. Are you positive? No, I'm not positive. If I'd known this was a secret meeting, I'd have tunneled my way in. <laughs> well, I guess we've got to take a chance. You see, Miss Brooks, we're going to circulate a petition among the students asking them to boycott the cafeteria. Boycott it? But, Harriet, what will your father say? I've talked to Daddy, Miss Brooks, and he says there's nothing he can do. I deplore the embarrassment this may cause him, but as student body president, my first duty is to my constituents. Here, here. I did, I did. <laughs> we just finished the preamble to the resolutions and the petition. If you want to hear it, I'll read it to you. Whereas and to wit. That's pretty strong language, isn't it? <laughs> a little on the pink side. <laughs> when in the course of students' events, it becomes necessary to turn one's back on one's stomach, we the undersigned, exercising our constitutional right peaceably to assemble and to form a committee to seek redress of grievances, do hereby announce our firm intention of patronizing the Madison High School cafeteria only to use the tables, chairs, water, napkins, 
and toothpicks provided therein until such time as the duly appointed party or parties, namely Mr. Osgood Conklin, principal, or the Board of Education, responsible for the operational bog down which has befallen this installation, do take such action which will improve the food, lower the prices, and better the service in said cafeteria. It is also recommended that the person or persons in whom this authority is vested do immediately proceed to the present chef in charge of preparing the food and without further frippery or fanfare, chuck him the heck off the premises. <laughs> well, Miss Brooks, what do you think of it, huh? How much are you asking for the picture rights? <laughs> Isn't it great, Miss Brooks? And look over here. We just painted these placards. That's in case the students vote to pick it. Pick it? Oh, now, wait a minute. This is look getting... Look at this sign here, Miss Brooks. Let's see. Remember Tomaine. <laughs> Here's another one. Don't worry about your old age. Eat here and you'll never make it. <laughs> Here's one that's made up. It goes, remember the saying, whatever goes up must come down? Or in our cafeteria, whatever goes Water! <laughs> Other way we can get hmm? What you kids are suggesting is practically mutiny. Now, I know the food isn't very good in the cafeteria, but... Just not very good, Miss Brooks? Well, pretty bad, then. Just pretty bad, Miss Brooks? Well, brutal. Hey, he's on our side. Here, Miss Brooks, take this sign. We're making you an honorary picket. But I don't want to be a picket. Don't you see, we've got to avoid all publicity, or Mr. Oh, Conklin... Oh, it's too late now. You're in this thing as deep as we are. I'm in this thing as deeply as you are. Well, this has certainly been an interesting little caucus, but I'm afraid I'll have to be running along now. Glad to have met you, Miss Brooks. Oh, thank you, Mr. Dunbar. Goodbye, Mr. Dunbar. So long. Goodbye, kids. Very nice fellow. Yeah, he used to teach English, too. Of course, now he's the editor of the Evening Gazette, one of the biggest papers in the county. He's been investigating conditions in the schools in this area. Oh, well, that's certainly a commendable sort of... <laughs> Investigating conditions? But he just heard me say the food here was brutal. So? So I want you to be sure and watch for my picture in the Gazette. <laughs> you think it'll be on the front page? No, in Little Abner. There's going to be a new school marm in dog patch. <laughs> Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. Ladies, what's your complexion problem? My skin's so dingy. Mine's oily. My skin's dull, coarse-looking. Doctors have proved that many complexion problems respond wonderfully to proper cleansing with palm olive soap, regardless of age, skin type, or previous beauty care. Oily skin looks less oily. Dull, drab skin, fresher and brighter. Coarse-looking skin appears finer. To win such complexion improvements, simply use palm olive soap. Nothing but palm olive is needed the way doctors advise. Wash your face with palm olive soap three times a day. Massage with palm olive's wonderful beauty lather for 60 seconds each time to get palm olive's full beautifying effect. Then rinse. Look for improvement within 14 days. Remember, 36 doctors, leading skin specialists, Advise this way for 1,285 women with all types of skin. And proved it could bring lovelier complexions to two out of three. So forget all other beauty care. Use palm olive soap the way these doctors advise for a fresher, brighter complexion. And ladies, enter the $100,000 49 Gold Rush Contest. The makers of palm olive soap offer $49,000 first prize and over 4,900 other prizes. Get entry blanks and complete rules from your dealer now. You may win a fortune in cash. Well, I finally prevailed upon Walter and Harriet to postpone the cafeteria boycott until I could talk it over with Mr. Boynton and report back to Mr. Conklin. Then I hurried down to the biology laboratory. Come in. Excuse me, Mr. Boynton, but I've got to talk to you about something. Could you come to the cafeteria with me right away? Oh, but I haven't been eating lunch in the cafeteria, Miss Brooks. I bring my lunch. Oh, I do, too. See, I've got my lunchbox with me. But I thought we'd go to the cafeteria for some coffee, and I could tell oh, you... Oh, I've I... got a thermos full of coffee, and it's so much cozier than the cafeteria. 
Won't you have lunch here, Miss Brooks, with me? Well, Mr. Conklin, I tried. (laughs) I suppose I could tell you what's on my mind after lunch. Oh, good. Sit right down at that table over there. Just push those jars to one side. All right, Mr. Boynton. Ah! What's the matter? One of these jars just smiled at me. (laughs) Oh, don't be alarmed, Miss Brooks. A friend of mine sent those to me from Africa. They're shrunken heads. (laughs) Well, if they're here for lunch, they can have mine. (laughs) I'll just be a minute, Miss Brooks. I'm feeding my pet frog, McDougal. You remember, Miss Brooks, Mac? Hi, Mac. (laughs) I always feed Mac before I eat myself. Just like the cowboy stars do in those Western movies. They always feed their horses first. Well, good for you, partner. (laughs) First, I've never owned a horse, but old Mac here is as close to me as any pet I've ever had. Yes, I know. Why don't we throw a saddle on him and go for a ride after school? (laughs) Look, Mr. Boynton, maybe I shouldn't wait any longer to tell you what I discussed with Mr. Conklin. Please, Miss Brooks, not while Mac's eating. This is a festive occasion. Let's not talk about anything serious. (laughs) I I heard a brand new joke the other day. Would you like to hear it? I might as well. It's sort of a riddle. It goes, why can't a woman swallow her apron? I don't know, Mr. Boynton. Why can't a woman swallow her apron? Because it goes against her stomach. (laughs) Fred Myers, the math teacher, told me that one. He's a hot sketch anyway, don't you think? Yeah, he's funnier than trigonometry. That new French teacher, Mr. LeBlanc, has a good sense of humor, too. As a matter of fact, he's supposed to have lunch with me today. He said he'd prepare something typically French at home and bring it into the lab. What do you think he'll prepare, Mr. Boynton? Frog's legs? (laughs) 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 She didn't mean it. Nobody's going to touch you while I'm around. Well, he's pretty sensitive, Miss Brooks. I'm sorry, Mac. I lost my head. Let me in, please. Oh, there's LeBlanc now. I'm sorry I have to kick on your door, Mr. Boynton, but as you can see, my arms are full. Hello, Monsieur LeBlanc. Oh, Mademoiselle Brooks. I'm doubly sorry my arms are full. Well, thank you, Monsieur LeBlanc. And I'll meet you in the casbah later. (laughs) Just put that casserole on this table here by those jars. Oh, very well. (laughs) Who are these? The Board of Education? Yes, African branch. <laughs> What's in the casserole, monsieur? Oh, it's a, it's a famous French recipe, Miss Brooks. It's called De Viande Delicieuse. Haché et modelé avec délicatesse en sphère de forme gracieuse. Which means? Meatballs. <laughs> I assure you they are better than the food served in our cafeteria. Oh, that reminds me. The kids have gotten up a petition to boycott the place. Good for them. Well, it may be good for them, but it won't be so good for me unless I can do something to stop it. You see, I promised Mr. Conklin... Please, Miss Brooks, let us not talk shop, eh? Well, Mr. Boynton, everything is ready but the sauce. This I must simmer for a few more minutes. May I use your Bunsen burner? Oh, of course. I'll turn it up for you. I'm not very hungry. Could I just bo- boil a small egg in a test tube? <laughs> <laughs> Mademoiselle Brooks, just hold this dish right here. So. Ah, uh, now, soon we will have the finest eating in the whole world. And while we're waiting, I tell you a story, yes? Oh, fine. <clears throat> well, this is a very old story that was handed down from the time of Napoleon Bonaparte and the Empress Eugenie. Please stop me if you've heard it, Miss Brooks. I doubt it. Eugenie and I weren't very chummy. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, there once upon a time, there was an emissary from the court of England. But he was not an emissary. He was a spy. And he had a message to another spy tucked beneath his belt. A, a message in code, of course. Go on. Well, when this spy got to Paris, he was apprehended by the Sûreté, you know, the police. And so he took the message from beneath his belt and thought to swallow it. But he could not. Pourquoi? Why? Because it went against his stomach. I don't get it. (laughs) Wait, you say he had the message tucked underneath... Never mind, Mr. Boynton. He can explain it later. Could I stop holding this dish over the Bunsen burner now? My nails are melting. <laughs> oh, but of course. Here, let me smell it. Oh, delicious. Yes, it just needs one thing. Let me see. Uh, Mr. Boynton. Yes? Do you think we could persuade Monsieur McDougal to stroll through the sauce? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> He's only kidding, Mac. Now, now, take it easy. Oh. Yeah, that's a boy. There are some plates on that shelf over your head, Miss Brooks. Would you hand me a few of them, please? All right, Mr. Boynton, but I'm afraid I won't be able to join you right now. I'm too nervous about Mr. Conklin. If he caught us eating here instead of the cafeteria... Will you please stop worrying about Mr. Conklin, Miss Brooks? I assure you the only reason he goes to the cafeteria is for appearance's sake. He's probably got a nice homemade lunch hidden in the safe in his office. In the safe? Oh, don't exaggerate, Mr. Boynton. Oh, let's forget about Mr. Conklin and enjoy our lunch together, huh? Just the three of us, like... The three musketeers. No, I make a toast. All for one and one for all. All for one and one for all. All for one and one for... Wait a minute. We're drinking formaldehyde. <laughs> three to the right. Four to the left. Now two more to the right. Ah, there we are. Now for a nice chicken sandwich. <laughs> Just the way I like it. Plenty of letters. <laughs> Come in. Greetings, Mr. Conklin. I'm Martin Dunbar. I used to teach for you a few years back. Remember me? Dunbar, Dunbar. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, of course. You taught Latin, didn't you? Well, you're close. English. Oh. Of course, yes. Well, always glad to see any of my old teachers drop in any time. I did. I dropped in today. Oh. Well, I'm rather busy right now, so if you could... Ah, uh, the same old evasive Osgood. What? Now, see here, young man, by what license do you call me by my first name? The same old pompous Osgood. Pompous? Why, you? Who do you? What do you? How dare you take... Play... And the what? same blood pressure, too, huh? Look, Osgood, as editor of the Evening Gazette, it's my duty to expose certain things to public view. Not all things, mind you, but just those things that have a rather unpleasant odor. Well, now, you leave our cafeteria out of this. <laughs> I mean, uh, I didn't you... mention your cafeteria, Osgood, but now that you did, I think you ought to know at least as much as I do. Namely, the students here are talking about a boycott. What students? Probably just a handful of irresponsible, scatterbrained, troublemaking old. Uh-huh. One of the pupils who told me about it was named Harriet Conklin. Just the type I had in mind. Nothing but a scatter... <laughs> Harriet Conklin? <laughs> yes, that's right, Osgood. Your own daughter. And it isn't just the students that are rebelling, either. I heard one of your teachers refer to the food here as brutal. A teacher said that? Uh-huh. Ah, uh, that'll make a nice, juicy headline, too. Faculty member slings mud at cafeteria hash. <laughs> no, just a minute, Dunbar. Or Madison English teacher vilifies vittles. Did you say English teacher? I did. Miss Brooks is the name. She's in this thing as deep as any of them. As deeply, editor. <laughs> <laughs> I told her... T Look, now there must be some way we can straighten this thing out. I'll tell you what, Dunbar, old boy... Yes, kiddo? <laughs> Meet me in the cafeteria in five minutes. We'll, uh, we'll have lunch together. <laughs> I was on my way down there when you came in. Oh, all right. But, uh, where are you going now? I'm going to find Miss Brooks and make her eat her words. Or worse, I'll make her eat in the cafeteria. <laughs> I'll see you in a little while, Dunbar. Oh, Mr. Conklin, before you go... Yes? You'd better slam that safe again. Your lettuce is showing. <laughs> Voila, that is the end of the story. But if he has a message under his belt... Mr. Boynton, why don't you get another meatball under your belt and forget the story? Aha! Uh -huh. Just as I thought. Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Conklin. Hello, Mr. Conklin. Hello, Monsieur Conklin. Don't hello me, you... you culprits. <laughs> Qu'est-ce que c'est, culprit? Mr. Conklin will qu'est-ce que tell you in a minute. <laughs> Miss Brooks, I entrusted you with a mission. A simple mission that a child could perform, and you failed me. Instead of bringing me news of this insurrection, you joined it. Oh, but Mr. Conklin, There's I... There's no time for apologies now. I want you to run down to the nearest good restaurant and buy the best lunch that you can and smuggle it into the cafeteria. I... What's that I smell? Oh, it's from this dish here. Say, that's a wonderful aroma. Oh, but of course, of course. It's my own recipe. The viande délicieuse hachée à des modelés avec délicatesse. Onze verres de forme gracieuse. 
Meatballs, eh? <laughs> Are they really good? Oh, yes, sir. They're wonderful. Well, that saves somebody a trip. Bring the whole plate up to the cafeteria immediately, Miss Brooks. Uh, you are acquainted with Mr. Dunbar, I presume? Dunbar? Yes, we've met. Don't sound so innocent. According to him, you shot your mouth off like it was the 4th of July. <laughs> I'll get that food into the cafeteria immediately. But Mr. Con- immediately! Well, I must say that was the best food I've ever had in or out of a school cafeteria. Well, I wish you'd repeat that statement, Dunbar. I see my daughter Harriet and her idiot consort approaching. Oh, hello, kids. Hello, Mr. Dunbar. Hello, Mr. Conklin. Mm. Why, Mr. Dunbar, you've cleaned your plate. Of course he has. The food was wonderful, wasn't it, Mr. Dunbar? <laughs> it certainly was. Oh, that means we can call off the boycott. Well, what did you do, Daddy? Fire the chef? Better than that, my dear. Look, behind the steam table. An order of meatballs, please. One meatball coming up. Uh-huh. Eve Arden returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Only Luster Cream brings you K. Dumas' magic formula blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Gives loveliness lather even in hardest water. Glamorizes your hair as you wash it. Luster Cream. Not a soap, not a liquid, but a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair fragrantly clean. Free of loose dandruff. Glistening with sheen. Soft. Manageable. Gives new beauty to all hairdos or permanents. Four-ounce jar, one dollar. Smaller sizes, either tubes or jars. Tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo and be a... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful Luster Cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a Luster Cream Shampoo. And now, ladies and gentlemen... We would like to bring to our microphone the Western editor of Radio Mirror Magazine, Miss Ann Daggett. Thank you, Mr. Lamont. And as you know, the current issue of Radio Mirror Magazine is now announcing the results of its annual awards based on a poll of radio listeners all over the country. It is my pleasant duty to present this scroll on behalf of those listeners who have elected as radio's top-ranking comedian... Miss Eve Arden. Thank you, Miss Daggett, and my sincere thanks also to you listeners who made this award possible. I'd like to say at this time that I'm certainly going to try in the coming months to merit the honor you've bestowed upon me, because I understand that if I win this scroll two years in a row, I get to keep Mr. Boynton. Thank you, again, and good night. Panonic Soap, your beauty hope, and luster cream shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written and directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, Leonard Smith, Gerald Moore, and Bill Conrad. <laughs> Do you shave with a lather or brushless shave cream? Plum Olive Shaving Cream comes both ways. And whichever way you prefer to shave, you'll find that using either Plum Olive Brushless or Plum Olive Lather Shaving Cream can bring you more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Here's the proof. 2,548 men tried the new Plum Olive way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they had shaved before, three out of every four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Get Palm Olive Brushless or Palm Olive Lather Shaving Cream today. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evenings over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS.